So in this uh, third installment of the series, possibly the last, we'll see, I don't want to make it go on longer than 20 minutes. Um, we're going to start talking about like modern uh, field theory and show how we can apply this to solve uh, some of these ancient uh, uh, problems that remained uh, uh, unresolved for you know, nearly thousands of years. So uh, we're gonna dip back and forth between like abstract stuff and concrete examples. Um, so recall that the definition of a field says that a set F um, together with a pair of binary operations, addition and uh, multiplication, as we call them, of course, it can look very different from what we normally think of as addition and multiplication. Uh, where the operations are commutative, so it shouldn't matter which order uh, we perform the operations in. Associative, meaning we can simply move parentheses um, around in these operations. Uh, it has to possess identities zero and one. So zero being uh, the additive identity means a plus zero is equal to a for all a, um, and one times a is equal to a for all a. Uh, such that zero is not equal to one. Okay, that looks like a nonsense uh, statement, right? Of course, zero is not equal to one. Again, remember, zero, one stand here for the identities of the field operation. Um, so we're simply uh, decreeing that the um, identity of multiplication cannot be equal to the identity of addition. That's really what I mean here. Um, and no zero divisors. Uh, so uh, we'll see an example of that in, in just a moment. So no pair of numbers such that their product under this um, operation can be zero when neither of them themselves are zero. There's actually one thing I forgot to uh, uh, write down here, and that is distributivity. Um, right, so that says a times uh, b plus c is equal to a times b plus a times c, the normal distributive uh, relationship of uh, addition and multiplication. So what are some examples of fields? Well, of course, the rational numbers, right? So uh, you can, uh, under our usual interpretation of multiplication and addition, um, you can combine the rational numbers in all these sorts of ways. Um, they have inverses uh, for all of these uh, operations. Um, oh, I, I suppose I forgot to mention that above. There's always um, um, inverses for all the operations. Um, and you, you stay within the field of, of rational numbers. Um, of course, the real numbers also form a field, as do the complex numbers. Uh, throughout the rest of the video, uh, possibly series, um, I'm going to take uh, curly C to denote uh, the constructible numbers. So we've already shown that this is a field, right? We can construct products, um, we can construct division, hence multiplicative inverses, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, this other thing here, uh, Z mod PZ, right? This is the integers modulo P, right? Modular arithmetic. Um, it turns out if, if P is a prime number, then this is actually uh, a field. Um, and then, of course, my research group would be very uh, upset with me if I didn't match, uh, uh, mention the glorious uh, uh, p-adic numbers. Um, and many more examples. Uh, some non-examples, of course, are, say, the integers with the usual operations of arithmetic. Um, I mean, there's no multiplicative inverses there, right? No multiplicative inverse of, of two because that would be one half and that's not an integer. Um, so in the field Z mod six, uh, we have zero divisors. That's why it's not a field. So for example, um, two times three is equal to six, but modulo six, that's zero. Um, right, so neither two nor three are the zero element um, in this ring, uh, if you know what that is, uh, but their product is zero. So that has a zero divisor, okay, can't be a field. Um, of course, matrices, if, if n is bigger than one, GLN, right, the, the invertible n by n matrices with real values, that's not commutative um, under its multiplication operation, um, so not a field. Uh, and same thing, quaternions. Uh, uh, here I'm using math bold h uh, to denote the quaternions, um, not a field because it's not commutative. Okay. Uh, so we say that a field E is an extension of a field F if it is uh, if F is contained in E. Okay, yes, I know there's some subtleties people here talking about injection contained in. Um, uh, I'm not here to bog people down in too much technical detail. I, I do that enough already. Um, so for example, you know, we know that the rational numbers sit inside the reals and the reals in, sit inside uh, the complex. So the reals are an extension of the rational numbers, the complex numbers are an extension of the reals, and therefore also an extension 
of the rational numbers. Um, so, oh yeah, as I just mentioned. So we've we've seen, you know, the constructible numbers, we can construct all the rationals, right? Since we can construct um, any of the, the integers and we can take any quotient of them. So, okay, we can form any rational number, um, but we saw that it contains things like the square root of two. So it's definitely a, a proper field extension. There's things that don't belong to the rationals in it. Um, and as we're going to see, though, it doesn't contain things like pi. And so uh, the real numbers are a proper uh, construction or extension, rather, of the constructible numbers. Um, so now, given a field f and some extension of it, we'll, we'll take some alpha in this extension. Uh, we define f braces alpha to be the smallest field that contains alpha and everything in f. And because we're saying that this is a field, it has to contain all the other things we might have to add in in order to make sure this is a field, right? So in the case of uh, Q would join the square root of two, right? So all the rational numbers have to be in there. The square root of two has to be in there, but we also have to be able to add things together, right? So things like one plus the square root of two has to be in there. So we have all the rational numbers. Um, we have to be able to multiply square root of two by itself, but that's fine because that's just two, which is rational. Um, but we have to be able to multiply the square root of two by any rational. So that's where we have the, the b square root there, uh, uh, times square root two there. And then we have to be able to add those things um, together. So my claim is that this is exactly um, uh, right. All, all of those uh, numbers, which are of the form a plus b square root two, um, that's exactly uh, uh, this set. Um, well, if you see, if you simply take uh, two numbers of this of this form, oh, I noticed uh, uh, a typo there with the D, pretend it's not there, but right, but A plus B square root two plus C plus D times square root two, that's gonna be A plus C plus B plus D times square root two, right? So that's of the uh, required form. And then same thing with uh, uh, multiplication. Those of you familiar with multiplying uh, complex numbers, it kind of looks uh, uh, sort of similar, but uh, but different. Right, a plus b square root two uh, times c plus d uh, uh, square root two. Sorry, that again, that repeat d should not be there. Um, but if you multiply these together and, and you work out the arithmetic, uh, this is the result you should find. And again, we, we have it of the form a rational number plus a rational number times a square root two. So certainly closed under this uh, those operations. Uh, so let's say we have an extension of a field E, an extension uh, 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 of a field F, for any X and Y in E, and any alpha and beta in F, um, if we you know, scalar multiply alpha by X and beta times Y, well, that's just a field operation. That's Those are both still in the field, and so is their addition, right? So in other words, we can take linear combinations of elements. What does that mean? That means it's a vector space over the field F. Now, okay, some of you might be like, what is going on? I'm in vector spaces, you know, I'm thinking about real coefficients. Well, if you go back, you crack open your linear algebra text, but you look at the definition of vector spaces. And in fact, you look at basically everything you do there, eigenspaces, matrices, blah, blah, blah. Um, this works for any field. Uh, it doesn't just have to be uh, uh, the real numbers. So basically all the things you already know about linear algebra uh, transfer over here. So E is a vector space with coefficients in the field F. And this allows us to uh, define a notion that helps us describe uh, sort of the size of an extension. So given some extension of field Z over F, we define the degree to be the dimension of E as a vector space with coefficients in F. Okay, we're gonna look at a lot of examples right away. Um, but uh, a quick theorem that's really useful. So suppose we have an extension K of a field E and E is in turn an extension of a field F, okay? Well, that means that F, since it's inside E and E is inside K, right? F is inside K. So K is an extension of F. And we have a theorem that says um, that the extension is the product of the two intermediate extensions. That is, if you take the extension of K viewed as a vector space with uh, coefficients in the field F, right? This whole big extension, that degree, the dimension of that vector space, should be the product of the dimension uh, of the extension of k over e times the extension of e over f. Okay, 
uh, one more one more sort of abstract thing before we look at some concrete examples. Um, given an extension of fields E over F, we have some alpha in E, um, and we're going to what we're going to do is look at the extension field F adjoin alpha. Um, okay, so we look at the set of polynomials whose coefficients are in the smaller field F and have alpha as a root of that polynomial. Then we take that whole collection of polynomials and we look at the polynomials of smallest uh, degree. And the smallest degree that we find there, it turns out that is the dimension of the extension of F adjoin alpha over F. Turns out that those are the same quantities. So that's going to be a really uh, useful tool. And conversely, you know, if if you have a degree and extension, you can find some polynomial with coefficients in the base field of degree n that has uh, that has that element you're extending as as a root. Um, so it could be possible that there are no such polynomials, um, in which case that actually corresponds to the extension field being infinite dimensional over the base field. For example, um, a proof, we're gonna rely on the proof that pi is transcendental um, in this video. So, so that precisely says it's not the root of any polynomials with rational uh, coefficients. Another way to view that is that Q adjoin uh, pi is an infinite dimensional vector space over, uh, over Q. So let's uh, look at some, some concrete examples now. For, uh, you know, we have this Q adjoined to, and we've already argued that it's equal to this set, right? So we see there's two things that we're adding together and, and multiplying scalars by, right? So this really tells us that uh, one and square root two is a basis of this vector space over the rational numbers. Um, and therefore, uh, this is dimension two. Right? The other way to see it of, is, of course, uh, the square root of 2 is a root of the polynomial x squared minus 2. And uh, there's, it can't possibly be the root of a polynomial with, uh, of degree 1. Right, This is just a linear equation with only rational coefficients. Because then uh, that would mean that the square root of 2 has to be rational. And we know it's not. So the other way to see is that, yeah, here's a polynomial. It's got square root of 2 of, uh, um, as a as a root, and clearly it's the smallest degree of any such polynomial, so we know that this field extension has to be degree two. Uh, this is actually much more general. So if you take um, some element d and the square root of d does not already happen to be in that field, um, then you're going to have a degree two extension. That's gonna be for, for any field. Um, uh, here's a sort of crazier one. So here the base field is q adjoined square root five. So we've already adjoined square root five. And now on top of that, we're going to adjoin um, the cubed root of two. So that's an example of a degree three extension. Um, as I've already you know, hinted at, I mean, we know that Q adjoin pi is, uh, is infinite in degree. So certainly the full real numbers over the rational numbers, uh, that's an infinite extension. Uh, but the real numbers, all you need, right? If you think about all your real, all, all your complex numbers can be written with form A plus BI where A and B are real. So actually the, the complex numbers um, going from uh, the reals up to complex, that's only a degree two extension. The other way to see it, of course, I is the, a, a root of X squared plus one, and that's the smallest uh, degree polynomial with real coefficients that has I as a root. Um, and then of course, now starting to revisit on some of the things we, we talked about in the previous video, uh, the rational numbers, we know that of course those are constructible and we can construct square roots. So we can construct the square root of say any prime number of which there are infinitely many. I just proved that in a recent uh, video in my number theory series. And uh, that means that Q adjoin all of these square roots is in the field of constructible numbers. And so namely, as a field extension of Q, the, the whole set of, of constructible numbers is an infinite degree extension. Uh, so I think 
that uh yeah infinite degree extension so i think we're gonna leave it uh there for now you've had an introduction to the basic tools of field theory and next time uh, we're gonna finish everything off we're gonna talk about uh the main theorem uh of of this whole little mini series and then we're gonna apply it to finally uh say something about these ancient impossibility theorems again questions comments concerns please i'd love to hear about them in the comments below and uh i'll see you next time